everybody, welcome back. This week we're going through one of our top asked questions for all rings and it is how thin is too thin? Or another one that people ask about is how skinny is too skinny for our rings? So since we've gotten so many requests on that information, I think it's about time that we just make an educational video. So we break it down to two categories. We have an e engaged rings and the fashion ring because for us, we kind of prioritize something that is very, very super meaningful. I try to recommend something that's a little bit more sustainable and long-term wear. Typically, you'll see a lot of our rings, um, for engaged rings, no thinner than 1.3 millimeters. Whether it be with stones or without stones. With stones, for sure, no thinner than 1.3 for engaged rings. And the reason is because any thinner, the ring cannot, it can't equalize the weight. Okay. At 1.3, you still have enough weight distribution that it reduces the amount of rotation on the finger. So that's why we call it the ring slouch. So you'll see a ring and it's slouchy to one side and it's typically because it's a really top heavy piece. And you'll see a lot of that with celebrity rings because their stone is obnoxiously huge and like their bands are so, so tiny. And the ones that you see slouch the side a lot are the ones with the really thin bands and that's because of the weight distribution. It has nothing to do with the quality of the ring but everything to do with science. So typically we recommend no thinner than 1.3. For a fashion ring, we usually recommend no thinner than one millimeter if possible without stones in the band. And if it does get to about one millimeter and then there are stones in the band, which is something that we don't offer, it gets really tricky with maintenance. And this is across the entire industry. Think of it this way. If a ring is super, super thin, okay, the prongs in the ring that are holding the tiny little diamonds are even thinner than that. So the thinner it is, the tinier the prongs, and there is no, absolutely no strength. We usually don't recommend that. For super skinny rings, our recommendation is somewhere around 1.3 millimeters if there's gonna be diamonds in it. And for most of our rings, if not all, the lowest height we usually recommend is 1.2 millimeter, even though our one millimeter bands are one millimeter and width from the top. The side is usually no lower than 1.2 because we found that it creates a less likely chance of it kind of caving and breaking. That's usually what we do. Folks in industry who does go one millimeter all the way around in diameter, and that's to save on gold and to make prices a little bit lower, but because we practice sustainability, it's important for us to kind of create a product that we feel is a little bit closer to the durable side. If you're asking about something that's safer and recommended for thinness, we usually recommend 1.3 or 1.5 for plain bands. If with diamonds, you can go 1.5 to 1.7. The industry average width of band is somewhere around 2.5, so all of our rings are really considered in the, the dainty and thinner side anyways. Another question was like, oh, is this good for everyday wear? Well, it, it depends, right? If you take off your jewelry for anything that's strenuous, typically it does last longer, if not a lifetime. It's really how you care for your product, right? You know, because gold, silver, and platinum, which are precious alloys, they're on the two to about four on the most scale and 10 being the hardest. And diamonds are about 9.5 to 10, depending on who's rating that, right? If you want it to last a lifetime, you kind of have to treat it with care. So first thing to take off when you get home, last thing to put on after your morning regimen, no chemicals with it. So swimming with chlorine can eventually break down the alloys, although it doesn't do anything right now. But in the long term, if you're like a professional swimmer, this can internally break down the alloy composition. No yoga unless the yoga involves just sitting there and breathing because you're talking your whole body weight, which is a minimum of 100 pounds compressed onto this tiny little band. And the more you warp the shape of the ring, the more likely it's gonna break. So if you're mindful and you care for your product, typically it can last a lifetime. And our job is just to be a source of knowledge to help you and guide you to making the best decision for choosing a, such a personal piece that will last you a lifetime. One of the things that we wanna to try to cover too as well is like people asking us like, well, if you're t telling us to take off this product and care for it, does that mean that it's not durable and it's not good quality product? No, that's not true. It's just, we want it to last a lifetime for you, right? That's our, our end goal. And if we give you guys all these precautions and, and things that you can do to, you know, be, to, to maintain it for life, 
that really makes us happy. If you want to learn a little bit more about our tips on how to care for the product, feel free to click on our jewelry care section. I believe that there's going to be a hyperlink below the uh, video that will link you to the care tips. And if you find that the, the tips aren't as helpful, you're more than welcome to give us a call or email us. Someone will be able to help you if you want to learn how to clean your jewelry, feel free to you know, view some of our videos below. We'll be able to show you how to clean for it as well, aside from just caring for the product. Following week is actually very exciting material. Uh, we're trying to redo one of our uh, top view videos, which is the, the difference between the moissanite and the diamond, so that you guys can actually review the material to kind of see the differences between the different gemstones in the more updated version of it. If you like what you're seeing, hit subscribe below. Stay tuned and see you guys next week. Thank you.